Welcome back, ladies and gents, to the Green League of Legends Varsity League 2017 Summer Term, powered by Lenovo Light the Sky. But before we get into our game two for match two between AMA University and University of the Philippines, today, man, we'll be introducing ourselves. Our Mark Dick, and of course, with me is Neep. And man, oh man. I mean, Foundation Day buffs are definitely working for AMA University right now. Yeah, definitely. That was a very impressive performance coming from AMA. Very dominant and clean game. And I'm expecting to see a lot more from them. I'm hoping they perform the same coming into game two. And hopefully Ablation Esports can pick up some of the slack. I don't think their draft was exactly the best out there. Mm. But we'll see how it goes. We'll just have to see indeed. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and check out the updated standings just so that we could get a reflection as to what the updates are. As you can see, AMA Retaliate does manage to promote themselves now, sitting at a 3-2. Meanwhile, Oblation Esports suffering their first defeat in the low varsity league. Just proves to show anything can happen. Looks like towards the end of it, nobody will be leaving this group stage unscathed as everybody has suffered a defeat across the board. No undefeated streaks will be happening this time around for the first term in the LDL. Yeah, that's indeed going to be the case. And let's take a look to see what happens as we head into Pick'em Ban, the second match between AMA and UPD. Yes, looks like AMA, of course, will be on the blue side this time around. UPD will take red side first ban coming in. Still, much respect to Veer's Elise in yeah, which case. Yeah, uh, Elise, Veer's Elise was pretty impressive against I Academy last week, so I just... They've taken note of that, and they're looking to just completely take that away. The same thing with Lissandra. We did see how, uh, Solis play Lissandra twice last week as well. So AMA have taken note of a lot of the picks that UP Dilliman have picked so far in this tournament. Meanwhile, for Blation Esports, it's going to be pretty standard. We do see the Orn, Cho'Gath, and Rek'Sai banned away from AMA. So AMA now has that first pick. What are they going to take? Well, Ezreal is available. But it ah. will instead be the Sejuani first pick. A pretty safe but interesting first pick, I yeah. think, coming in from AMA side. I'm not really sure, because I feel like if there's any person that could bring insight into what UPD may go for, it would be you. Like, would Sejuani be a contested pick that UPD would go for within the second rotation? Um, I don't think so, but it looks like UPD, they're going to respond by taking that Gragas away. It's knowing that it's a Sejuani, they can afford to pick a slower jungler like the Gragas, and Gragas does have really good disruption and ganks. So they're going to go ahead and do so, and we do see the Seraph. The Seraph is going to be a flex pick, actually. It could be either in the mid lane or in the support role. Support Seraph has been a thing that we've been seeing in Korea. Very strong and highly contested, actually, in the Korean solo queue, even in Kespa Cup that's going right. on right now. Have you tried it out for yourself? Uh, yeah, yet? of course. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's one of my favorite champs to play right now. Uh, very rewarding and very fun to play. Lots of damage. That's, Fair enough. It's kind of like a Zyra, I guess. Oh, ah, okay. yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. you see it's going to be the Saya and the Rakan, the famous bottom lane duo, the classical, right there. <laughs> so pretty standard stuff, and I'm looking forward to see how Ken Frost and Relapse perform on this bottom lane duo. So let's go ahead and review the second rotation of bands coming up from both sides. Shen and Maokai focus towards Nuna as well as the Vladimir and Zed towards Niebe. And the Nar will be chosen by UPD along with the Camille as well as the Oriana, the man for AMA. Yeah, so the Nar is an interesting blind pick. I guess a lot of the top laner tanks are banned away. So that forces you to play a bruiser like Jace or something like Nar. And I guess for Ablation Esports, it will be that Nar, But it will be responded by with the Camille pickup. So interesting choice coming in from AMA. The Camille versus Nar isn't exactly one that I think Camille favors. I really like that Oriana pickup though. That's a pretty safe mid laner in the hands of AMA. And we do see it will actually indeed be the Seraph support. So Seraph, <sighs> Varus, really strong poke heavy bottom lane with the Azir in that mid lane to provide the sustained damage. So I really like this lineup, but it's pretty hard to execute properly. Meanwhile, AMA, they've got a pretty standard team fight composition going right. around, and it's also very strong in their own regards. I'd like to tr touch on a little bit more on the Seraph support, because as you mentioned, there's definitely some pretty good merits to Seraph, but what are the foreseeable consequences that could go wrong for UPD if ever the Seraph doesn't quite live up to expectation as to what he should be fulfilling with that role. Well, Seraph is a pretty immobile and squishy target, so they do. if Seraph does get dove, that's going to spell a lot of trouble. But if you're able to maintain that positioning, 
and just get that constant safe poke out. You can be doing a lot of damage, contributing a lot to your team's damage. And the stun is actually really strong. At max range, the Seraph stun is doing two seconds. Ah. So it's kind of like a Morgana in the sense that you have a long range CC, but it's not a root, it's a full on stun, mm -hmm. and you have a lot more damage to follow up once you get that stun connected. We'll just have to see if UPD Man can execute with the surprise Seraph pick as we head into technically what is game four for our overall broadcast between AMA University, Kazan City's Retaliate versus University of the Philippine Dilemon's Ablation Esports. Let's go ahead and head into the action. Yeah, and we do see Seraph. Rocking the airy, actually no, it will be the comet. There was the meteor. Oh, that was the meteor. I thought there was the airy floating right. around that Seraph. So, <laughs> double comet. So earlier we, today we saw the traditional le uh, press the attack Varus build where you get the Ginsu's Rage Blade, the um, Ginsu's the uh, Runin's Hurricane. But for <laughs> this time around, we are gonna see the comet onto this Varus. So we're most likely gonna see the lethality build coming out and I'm looking forward to seeing that. Veer and Alto forgetting to buy items are forced to back away. That will delay Veer a bit within the first few seconds of this game. As to uh, need to buy his jungle items, that's a little bit careless. Yeah, I mean, I guess they were a bit too excited yep. coming into the second game, but let's see how much it impacts this game so far as we do see Yochan already getting punished by Ken Frost and Relapse, taken down to half HP because of that mistake by forgetting to buy your items. Yeah, what's up? Uh, man, oh man. I mean, let's just see how that'll translate for you to be Diliman later on. Looks like Alto will make his way back to lane, though. We'll just leave Veer to make good use of farming that blue buff for himself. And let's just see how that'll go down. I mean, looks like that will be a connecting knockup onto Alto. Relapse dealing quite the damage there. Alto forced to back away. That will be the Ignite. Heal being propped up right there. Relapse bit off a little bit more than he could chew. Will survive with a slither of health. But man, things went really well though for Amy. And yeah, Lucy. it was Alto not respecting the position of Ken Frost and getting punished very hard. That's the thing with the Seraph support. You can't afford to position like that. If you get out of position, then you're going to get punished extremely hard, especially if it's a Rakan Saya. Yeah. So it shows that Alto maybe not too proficient just yet on this champion. Yeah, they do want to look out for any potential engages on from the Rakan rather. That lead does lead into that knockup crash. A lot of opportunity to let's deal tons of damage, especially considering the nature of Zero. Oh, we have an initiate though. Solas though will be making the dash away. Will manage to survive though. Looks like we'll be making it back, but no, will restrain himself. Just allow that wave to push in coming in from Yebe. Oh, that stun connecting there. Kenpo's taking a bit of damage there. All too very, very healthy though. So looks like things will look bright for you to deal with as they are at an advantage with Relapse and Ken Frost on the lower side of the spectrum. In terms of health, Gear is lingering in that brush though. Might try something onto Niebe. Looks like they are trying to bank on Niebe going for the extend onto Stalls. Meanwhile, that won't be the case though as looks like he will make the escape into safety. Yeah, so we do see that it actually went in favor of UP Diliman, that initial mid lane gank, as Solus didn't burn any sums to escape that gank. Meanwhile, it was Zhao who burned the flash to try to get that kill. And with that, let's see how they decide to play around the Sejuani not having the flash available. Indeed, looks like we do have a little bit of both junglers lingering towards this bottom side, oh, not really bottom side, mid side rather. But take note, Yocha and also have this way pushed out. Relapse will be forced to contend with this way pushing under third. We'll be able to clear that out. We'll be missing out on a bit of his CS though. So that's definitely good for Yochan here, in which case he is. A wave up will be making a recall though, so that will grant Relapse to get back on equal terrain in terms of creep score. Yeah, so you do see that it's going to be the tier of the goddess being built by the Varus, so looking to go for the more poke heavy and lethality heavy build uh, to synergize with this comet. So interesting to see how this poke is going out so far. It does seem like AMA is doing a good job of dealing with this extremely poke heavy bot lane composition. The Seraph and Rakan have been doing work, they haven't really fell behind so far in lane, and that's a pretty good sign for AMA. Uh, meanwhile, here towards the top side, Falsada just taking three hits back and forth from Nuna. They're doing quite well. Meanwhile, though, taking note, 
here towards this mm, top side, Zhao has made that rotation along with Veer. This could break out into a full on fight, though. Looks like Nuna gonna first shoot for Sada, in which case he does get the dive in onto Nuna, but looks like he will be going down to Veer. Zhao looks like we're gonna regret this real quick. Tries to back away under to it. Is further pursued by both Veer and Nuna. May potentially be going down, and double kill goes to Veer. Yeah, and that was a very clean gank coming in from Veer. Very good counter gank, good read all around. And that's the problem when you don't have that flash available in that early game. Zhao could have lived if he had that flash still available. Meanwhile, in that bottom lane, Alto taken down very low. The W does land onto Alto, so the initial engage coming down. But it's still 2-0 in flavor of Ablation Esports. And that's going to help quite a bit to really establish this victory for UPD. Steel shots thrown up by Yochan and Alto and not connecting onto either Ken Frost or Relapse. So let's go ahead and see though. Take note, the call has been taken by Relapse though. So we'll be banking on, you know, just taking it a little bit more easier. I mean, with that call, once you try to last it as much as possible, take full advantage of that. We'll get that bonus. So once the stacks come down. Meanwhile, Ken Frost in a lot of trouble. Survives with only a pint of his health left. Relapse though, getting a little bit of retaliation. No pun to their team name. Send it onto Yochan though, but still AMA's bot lane. Yauch actually gets sniped down. Yeah, yeah, and that's the poke damage coming in from this bottom lane. The Varus and Seraph is scary if played correctly. And I think we just saw that in action just a few seconds ago. Things are looking pretty good for UPD Liman just for Yochan. Continuing to Exert a bit of dominance right there. We'll be allowing that wave again to push him onto Relapse though. Relapse definitely holding his own though. They are equal in terms of TS. Looks like Solus though. All three members of Yuki Diliman in fact here looking to take away the red buff from Zhao. Not able to do anything in which case. So I'm liking the proactivity coming in from Yuki Diliman. Definitely dictating the flow of this game thus far. That will be a route. Onto Relapse though, Ken Frost not able to connect the knockup, but that doesn't matter though. Yochan taking so much damage for him to deal with. Relapse getting the kill looks like also will find himself in an unfavorable situation. Not really much mana onto him. Tries to get a hit onto Relapse, but no, the kill goes to Ken Frost as that does go in AMA's favor. Meanwhile, the fight is breaking out here between both junglers and mid laners from both sides. No casualties though, except for the bot lane and super nothing in favor of AMA. Yeah, that was a really good play coming in from Ken Frost being there at the right time and a very weird Q coming out from Seraph, shooting in the completely opposite direction. Solus and Veer need to be careful as Ken Frost is waiting in the wing. A possible re-engage might be on the horizon. Looks like we'll be restraining themselves for the meantime. Take note, yeah, but only making his way back just right now. So that would have been wise to have gone for it. But good restraint there. Meanwhile, Falsada taking stacks here from Nuna has to be careful. Just one more and down he goes. As Nuna secures the kill, really starting to do... Yeah, Good the solo here. kill coming in from Nona is huge. That's a really huge morale booster when you get those sort of kills. And with that, we should be seeing a very strong Nar coming into the mid game as it's going to be hard for the Camille to really deal with this. Yeah, Posada. Not exactly on the best end of the spectrum in comparison to earlier when he dealt with Nuna quite well. Looks like Nuna off for vengeance after what happened earlier during game one. But still, UPD Man can't breathe a sigh of relief just yet because there is still a pretty much good room for AMA University to get back on track here. Not much of a significant lead just yet, but pretty sizable for UPD Man. A great platform for them to work with overall. Yeah, so let's see what UP Dilman does now. The score is now 4-2. Only a 1,300 gold lead, so still anyone's game. We do see that Veer is making his way towards the top side again. Has been spotted out. Sejuani also in the top. So again, the battle for this top lane again showing itself as this blue buff has spawned. Veer definitely gutsy here, has been across the map here, extending the boundaries into the base of AMA. This will be a good spot here though. They have a good idea as to where the Sejuani is at right now. Meanwhile here, looks like that will be a practice knock up onto Alto. The Alto forced to flash away. Meanwhile, he took quite a bit of damage there from both 
Altuin, Yo, Chan, Ken Frost, and looks like they will back away for the meantime. Meanwhile, there is going to be a collapse onto Falsada here. Two members, both Nona and Beer, are on his case. That will be the chase around. Unfortunately, explosive pass back into Yupi Dinivan's kill range as Nuna secures the kill. Now, 2-0 into on this NAR. Yeah, this NAR is getting very strong, and it's not Falsada's game so far. He's 0-3. The gangs from Beer have been on point in this top lane. And hopefully they're able to scale into this mid-game. However, it's still anyone's game. AMA does have that potential to just really turn it around with that Orianna Shockwave and with the Sai as well. The bottom lane of AMA has been doing a good job of really playing against this poke-heavy composition of Barris and Sarah. Zhao not able to do much except for try to fend off both Luna and here He is very low in terms of mana, so no initiations anytime soon. Even if Falsada makes his way back to lane, take note, these are three members of Yupi Dilimando shoving out towards bot lane Solace, joining the fray to get a sizable amount of damage. On this turret, Relapse has to be careful, doesn't want to get in much of range of UPD because that could result to a full lockdown coming from them. They are making good work of this turret. Solus as well. Will make their way here. Clearing out the way through the Seraph. Definitely great use. Definitely seeing a lot of value out of the Seraph support within this shove though. Almost there, Yochan. Just one more hit, but no, it doesn't want to risk it. Took quite a bit of turret damage there. Yeah, that's a lot of turret damage and unfortunately the first turret doesn't fall for Ablation Esports but that would have been a huge gold swing if they were able to do so. Yep. So that still leaves the opportunity for AMA to take this lead right now and possibly go for a play of their own. We'll just have to see though. Meanwhile, looks like Zhao and Beer will be meeting each other in the river and that will be a good smite steal coming in from Zhao on the Rift Scuttler. So that will grant them some decent control over this dragon over the next few seconds or so. And while Falsada and Nuna are juking it out a bit, Nuna just getting stacks quite nicely onto Falsada. They're able to dodge that last hit that would have resulted to a full stack right there. Still though, really, really good step up here coming in from UP Diamond overall across the map. I like how decisive they are within this early game, but we'll just have to see if this will translate to even greater things for them going into the mid and late game. Yeah, so the items are still slowly being built up. Nothing completely done just yet. And despite being 5-2, AMA is still in the game. The turrets are getting pretty low right now, so Oblation Esports might be looking at a pretty good gold, gold swing in their favor. Both top and bottom are only a few hits away from falling. But let's see what Sejuani can do. The eyes are on the junglers right now. Yes, meanwhile, a bit of balance here back in two lanes here, but Relapse and Ken Frost, they can't afford for this wave to push into their turret because it's only just one hit shy away of first turret of the game. But take note, Zhao is lingering towards this bot side, though. We'll be making a recall in which case, I'm not sure if that's the best decision to leave that lane just yet. It is quite vulnerable. Relapse not allowing that wave to push all the way into turret, allowing all, not granting Alto or Yo Chan that window of opportunity just get one last hit there so it's like it's a fight of their lives for relapse and ken frost as far as defending that turret still though looks like nuna shoving out this way towards posada everything shoved out for yuki Diliman across lanes here looks like zao will be revealing himself will be going on the defense though yochanotic overextending his boundaries knowing very well that zao is there if ever that does result to a lockdown not the best thing that would happen to him in which case it looks like AMA will manage to defend that turret but for how long exactly I'm not quite sure yeah so let's see what exactly happens these turrets are getting extremely low so, across the board yeah like every single lane has these really low turrets it looks like Nona should be able to get the first turret of the game to fall in favor of Ablation Esports and this bottom lane is slowly getting poked out we do see Beer and Zhao on this bottom side of the map so something can happen Great tempo coming in from UP Diliman. Lots of decisiveness, lots of proactivity, which have been hearing great results from them thus far. That will propel them into a 2,500 gold lead. And this may grow even bigger as they go for this dragon. A little bit of a slower take, but looks like Zhao making his way towards this dragon. I wonder if he will try to go for the steel beer. Actually, goes in to make sure that that blasting cone isn't made available to him. Take note, there could be an Arctic Assault into a flash out steel looks like Zhao not gonna risk it doesn't want to propel UP Diliman to any further leads we'll just give it up to them as you know just uh, 
Yeah, one drink isn't yeah. the end of the world. Uh, <laughs> Not in, yeah, definitely, for sure, for sure. But it does help by quite a bit, and with both the top and bottom lane turret falling, plus this Drake, that puts UP Dilemon at a decent advantage right now. They're up 3,000 gold. So let's see what they decide to make use of it. Mid lane turret still pretty healthy right now, though. Oh, also, though, looks like they'll get an ultimate, and Ken Frost does get the knockup to prevent any further ults being thrown out. Flash out coming in from Yochan to avoid the Glazer Prison, but Fosada able to collapse onto ult. It looks like here might be the next casualty. Looks like we'll flash away to safety. And first divide, isolating the members of AMA, but looks like they're still on UPD's case. Nuna gets a three-man shove and make that four-man shove it into the wall onto AMA as they go onto the retreat. Nuna just too much of a beast for AMA to deal with right now. They're collapsing one by one. Three members of AMA are down. Fosada might be the next casualty. Tries to style his way out of there. Nyebe very low on Mana, not able to slow down Nuna looks like Nuna back into mini nar form. A few more hits, one more, and down Niebe goes. Now unstoppable. Yupi Dileman coming out in a four for nothing. This is big. Yeah, it's, speaking of big, that nar was big in that team fight right there. Really great ultimate securing that team fight. It looked like AMA was gonna come out on top, but the counter engage was real from Nona. And with that, that puts the score at 9-3, a 5,000 gold lead in favor of Ablation Esports. And let's take a look at exactly what happened. We do see that the initial engage wasn't enough. The teleport did come in and good knockup from Ken Frost. But at this point, it does look like the collapse is going to be really good for AMA. They did a really good job of picking Alto off immediately. We do see that Oriana is also on his way. But there's two things that really went well for Ablation Esports in this fight. The initial Emperor's Divide just zone away all of them. Plus the big Gnarl that just comes up right there. And yeah. with all of that combined together, it allowed for Ablation Esports to come back and pick that team fight victory. The Oriana Shockwave wasn't really useful. With all your powers combined, I am Ablation Esports. And that is Yupi Diliman just really making good work of AMA at this Point. I like the momentum that they're starting to build up into this game. Let's go ahead and see this could propel them to going equal into 1-1. One, one. AMA University has to try to make plays that will hopefully help its way things back into their favor. Looks like this will be a collapse onto Nuna. Shockwave coming in from Nieve. Nuna going down way too fast. And finally, Falsada. Sweet vengeance right there. Meanwhile, UPD Mine will be making good work on the Swift Herald. Will be spotted out by the rest of AMA, though. Zal will try to help out Ken Frost here. Relapse as well. Coming into the front line, dealing a sizable amount of damage onto here. Not quite enough does yet, but that will be Sol is cut out between the members of AMA, but does manage to take down Ken Frost. Double kill right now. That is the bot lane from AMA down. And looks like UPD Man will secure this rip arrow for themselves. Right? Right. Yeah, quite well. convincingly, <laughs> despite Nona falling a bit too aggressively, a bit too aggressive there in that bottom lane, did die 1v2, overextended a bit too much. It was, again, Ablation Esports coming out on top with the play and another great Emperor's Divide from Solas really setting up the kill. And with that, it's going to be the Rift Herald for Ablation Esports. I got to hand it to AMA University, though. In the midst of all the action that's happening, I mean, there's a lot of things that have been going right for UPD Man lately, but the goal isn't as big yeah. as I They've expected. been doing a pretty good job of maintaining that CS um, differential yeah. between these two teams, despite being down six kills and roughly 4,000 gold. They've been, a really, they've been doing a really good job of sticking um, with them CS-wise, and that's really what's keeping them in the game right now. And this is, take note, kills not in their favor, not even objectives in their favor. UP Diliman is up turrets and a dragon, not a single turret or dragon to AMA University's name right now. But they're still definitely holding their own. I'm interested in seeing how this will transition for them. They still have to look for that window of opportunity to try to turn things back into their favor, in which case Ken Frost will be clearing out vision from the side of UP Diliman's Baron Control. Meanwhile, that will be up in just a bit as we head into 20 minutes into the game. UP Diliman on the offensive in this mid lane, though. So, is he gonna try something? Yeah. Has to be careful. Solos is quite ahead right now at 3 0 into on this Azir. Yeah, Ablation Esports does have that poke comp available to them, but there is a lot of hard engage from AMA, and it looks like they're looking for it right now. Yao point black. Shut down onto Solas, and this will be the fight that AMA might have been looking for. You can be here taking so much damage from Liam, so we'll be going down. Falsada actually manages to survive. Yojan tries to chase him, but finds himself in an awkward position. Goes down, double kill for Relapse Nuna. A little bit into late for this fight, though. AMA 
they could potentially clean it up, but Nona and Altu don't risk it. Yeah, very good play, very good intuition coming from a in AMA, going for that very clean engage, and a bit questionable coming in from Ablation Esports as Yochan tunnel visioned way too hard on the Sejuani and died for it, and this might be the Baron for AMA as a result, so the comeback is real. Yochan not having the best time in both games thus far. Did great within the earlier phases though, definitely, but that was a bit of a slip up and it would be unfortunate if this does lead to a Baron take coming in from AMA. Nona tries to contend for this. Then that is gonna be the Baron steal though, wow! And Nona was just attacking the Baron the whole time. Just jumps into the pit, disregards the rest of the AMA members and still manages to get the steal plus the kill onto Sejuani. And with that, that keeps Yupi Dilman still in the game. That was a little bit of an oopsie right there. Yeah, a bit of a AMA slip up right there. And the gold is still 3,000, so AMA were able to reduce that gold lead by roughly 1,000. But with that, it's going to be Yupi Dilman taking this Mountain Drake and looking to potentially siege as they have Baron on three members. Such four members, shame. actually. Missed out, missed out opportunity there from AMA University, but. Luckily, as far as gold difference, it's still pretty much playing within the thousands that we have been seeing over these past 10 to 15 minutes thus far. Or rather, not 10 to 15, but 5 to 10 minutes rather. Yeah. So overall, still a lot of room for AMA to recuperate. That was definitely a great advantage that they had and earlier. In the we just time. saw that despite AMA being down 4,000 gold, it didn't really matter to them right. as they were still able to make the play that led up to them going for the Baron. So with them only being down 2,000, 3,000, I still think AMA can win this game. Man, but still, as you mentioned, player to look out for thus far and has been performing quite well for AMA is Relapse. Currently sitting at a 4-2-4 on this Saya. Has been quite the contender for UPD Demon to deal with, especially in those flashes. Dissing out so much of the damage even onto the tankier members of UPD Demon. Dealing a sizable amount every single time. Looks like UPD Demon will be on the offense taking full benefit of this stolen Baron from AMA University Sport. Yeah, yep. but they do need to be careful as that is a Sejuani and Oyana. The engage is inevitable. Yeah, this is a, the trickier part right here because I feel like for Yuki Diliman. They have a great front line though, by the way, in the form of the Gragas as well as the Nar. But then again, there's definitely a bit more that they had to deal with as far as protecting the more delicate members in addition, plus the Seraph. But then again, Looking at Alto's bill, actually I have the Watchers, the only item that's granted in any form of survivability or stats that helps him a little bit last longer, but then again, not really sizable health enough, but still you can get him on making good work across the board. Rift Herald actually pushing out towards the top right amidst the chaos that was happening towards the mid lane. Heavy shove coming in from UPG. Yeah, so it's gonna be Ablation Esports maintaining this push. Bottom and mid lane are still pushing right now. Let's see what they're able to do with this. Great configuration across the board coming from UPD Dilman. Getting some decent pressure across the lanes, even with a six member in the form of Rep Herald towards the top side. Looks like UPD Dilman really wants in on this inhibitor turret. This super minion empowered wave making good work of it, slowly taking it down. Not quite there just yet, though. Nuna is lingering. Will get spotted out by that ward, though. Yeah, me just going for the defense. UPD lingering around this mid lane, just allowing the waves to come in. Patience is a virtue for them at this point. Nuna, though, will be making good work of the sword. Pulsada has made the transition towards bot side to deal with it. Looks like we'll be juking out with Nuna. That is a turret taken down from AMA University, though. They are juking it out. Pulsada made a bit of more than he could do. Nuna building on stacks. Get the shoves in onto Pulsada and takes him down. This is going to be a fight, though, that transpires in the like Two man shockwave coming in from Yebe right there. Manages to take down Solas. Beer might be the next casual to hear. Relapse is dealing quite a number of damage. That's going to be the redemption coming in from Ken Frost to heal up his members. That's three, mem three members total of UPD Demon that is down. Looks like they're going to collapse onto Nuna at this point. Even with the health bar, it's not working in his favor. The damage is just too real for Nuna to deal with. And that will be four for one in favor of Amy. Yeah, that was a really good shockwave coming in from the Oriana. Great follow up by Zhao. And consistent damage all around from Relapse. Relapse 5 to 7 right now. He's been doing a very good job of maintaining the DPS numbers for this AMA side. 
And I do think that Solus didn't have to go for such a big stream of shuffle. He should have saved it for the disengage and just look to continually continue to poke rather than just going for that. As once you go for that play, you kind of put yourself out of the team fight. Agreed. And just working beautifully for AMA University. It's interesting to see that UP didn't mind game one, game two. There's these moments where there starts struggling, fumbling a bit within the later parts of the game. And I don't know, this is kind of a, a worrisome trend for them because yeah. this could propel AMA University to a 2-0 if they don't play their cards correctly. Meanwhile, AMA having a ball with especially Relapse, I mean... Yeah, the goal is only a thousand at this point. Relapse, he's looking very strong. Not really making any flashy plays like the Shockwaves right. or the Sejuani ults, but consistent and that's important. Yeah, consistent damage across the board, just allowing the rest of AMA to do the work just so that Relams has a better reach to deal that consistent damage. So it's definitely a collaborative team effort that's working overall for AMA. I'm not really sure about the Serat working for UP Dinaman at this point. Yeah, it's really hard when you have so much dive potential from AMA. Serath hasn't really been doing a good job of poking and just getting those long-range stun picks. And that's right. something that you really need to be doing as a Serath or else you're just useless. Meanwhile, you didn't mind just allowing this wave to push in. No longer minion, super minion, uh, Baron empowered rather. But looks like AMA gonna hold their own. This might be a potential initiate coming in from AMA. Gets cancelled out by the explosive class. No further pursuit will be happening for the meantime. Everything's safe and sound. But turret taken down towards the bottom side. Was that the bottom side? Yeah, that yeah. was indeed the bottom. And that does put the gold slightly back closer for AMA's favor. Ever so slightly. Meanwhile, Amy looking for that moment of opportunity to utilize a great initiate, whether it be from the Sejuani or Falsada, maybe leading the free or Shockwave. But then again, with Falsada, he still has to be a bit careful. Only Trinity Force completed for him. So, still in a bit of a delicate state, but does kind of get the job done by getting a hold on to the whatever member he does target using the Hexic over matter. Meanwhile, UPD Niman is going to go for this Infernal Grave. This is going to be big with the damage across the board. Looks like Souls will be able to secure it. Teleport coming in, not getting the knock onto Nuna. Nuna will manage to jump this away. That is going to be the Glacial Prison Lockdown coming in from the rest. Charm! Three member Charm coming in from Ken Frost right there. Double kill for real last three members of UPD Niman are down. This is the turnaround that AMA University has been looking for. All the force to flash away. Only a bot lane of UPD Niman remains. They are currently on the offense though. Looks like this wave that has been pushing out towards bot has proved fruitful for you. AMA University, rather, they will make good damage out of this inner turret. Looks like they could go for an inhibitor and an inhibitor as well. Still heavy death timers across the board for Nuna, Veer, and Souls, respectively. Still within the 20s place, they're making good work of this turret right now. Alto and Yotan trying to defend, but then again, they're squishies themselves. They can't defend as hard as they want, but Alto just gets clapped on heavily by Ken Frost. Good styling right there. It is Falsada that secures the kill, and that's so much value for AMA yeah. as they propel ahead in gold. That was a zero, like a four for zero, and it all starts with this very nice engage. The Shockwave actually has three members of this UPD squad, and the Shrima, the Shrima Shuffle just didn't work out in UPD's favor. It actually pushed Ken Frost and Zhao a lot closer to the team. And you don't want to fight in those sort of positions when you're Ablation Esports. You have a Sejuani, a Oriana, and a Saya who excel in those conditions. And UPD basically handed those conditions to them on a golden platter, on a silver platter, exactly. and said, take it. That was take so the weird. Win. <laughs> and it's kind of worries that AMA able to establish great control over this Varano will make a rotation towards taking down this outer top turret. Will continue the fray. That's a heavy minion wave that they are working with. UPT the man gonna try to clear it out. Looks like they do have the tools for that, but that's a lot of minions. Also getting a decent amount of damage to clear out that wave. Let's go in and see how this will ultimately break out, though. You can get him on the defense. It's out getting the Glacial Prison Lockdown. That's a one-man shockwave, but still, the damage is just too much for Yuki Dineman to deal with. Falsada comes on to Yotan, getting the kill. That's three members of Yuki Dineman that are down, capitalizing on the absence of Nona. Triple kill for Falsada. The vengeance is just too real for AMA's top laner. That's going to be the stun lockdown. Nona manages to trouble away the members of AMA. 
Kame. They could potentially finish this game, though. That's like that's gonna be a plus. Onto Nuna, he's dealing, taking so much damage. Five members of AMA in the ace. This could very well be the game. Heavy death timers across the board in what could be a 2-0. Yeah, the comeback is real for AMA. Despite being down for the majority of the game, they managed to show their prowess, get the proper engages, and win the game against Ablation Esports. Not only winning the game, going 2-0. Man, on top of that. oh man, if there's one thing that AMA University uh, retaliated did right now, they, they gave their alma They mater. definitely re retaliated right there. Exactly. I mean, living up to their name. And not only living up to their name, but, you know, giving a all the more to celebrate for AMA University on their foundation. They very well played. I don't know what exactly went wrong there, though, for UPD. I, I think the, it came down to the Zir and Seraph not really positioning really well. They didn't respect the engage coming in from the um, Oriana, right. from the Rakan, from the Sejuani. And it was just really good presence of mind coming in from all their initiators on the enemy side to get those engages down. Meanwhile, Relapse did a very good job of just maintaining that constant damage throughout the team fights. And all of that combined together proved for a solid victory. So there you have it, folks. Once again, congratulations to AMA University. Retaliate and happy Foundation Day to you guys once again. All the more reason to celebrate and enjoy yourselves right there. Well played as well for to UPD Man for fighting their hardest in this game. When we do come back, we still have one more game, though. But for the meantime, we'll just take a short break just to, you know, get our bearings on. I'm Arctic at the service fam. With me is Sneep. This is the Green Alol Varsity League 2017 Summer Term. Powered by Lenovo. Light the sky. We'll be right back. So stay tuned, guys. Ultimate and Ken Frost does get the knockup to prevent any further ults being thrown out. Flash out coming in from Yoshan to avoid the Glazo Prison, but Fosada able to collapse onto Alto. Looks like here might be the next casualty. Looks like we'll flash away to safety. And first divide, isolating the members of AMA, but looks like they're still on UPD's case. Nuna gets a three-man shove and make that four-man shove it into the wall onto AMA as they go onto the retreat. Nuna just too much of a beast for AMA to deal with right now. They're collapsing one by one. Three members of AMA are down. Fosada might be the next casualty. Tries to style his way out of there. Nyebe very low on Mana. Not able to slow down Nuna. Looks like Nuna back into mini bar form. A few more hits. One more and down. Yeah, they go now but unstoppable, but that will be Solus cut off between the members of AMA, but does manage to take down Ken Frost. Double kill right now. That is the bot lane from AMA down, and looks like UPD Man will secure this map. Oh, AMA for looks like they're looking for it right now. Yeah, point blank. Shut down onto Solus, and this will be the fight that AMA might have been looking for. You see, here taking so much damage from Liam, so we'll be going down. Fosada actually manages to survive. Yotan tries to chase him, but finds himself in an awkward position. Goes down, double kill for Relapse Luna. A little bit into late for this fight, though. AMA, they fight there, manages to take down Solus. Here might be the next casualty here. Relapse is dealing quite a number of damage. That's going to be the redemption coming in from Ken Cross to heal up his members. That's three. Mem three members total of UPD the one that is down. Looks like they're gonna collapse onto Nuna at this point. Even with the health bar, it's not working. Off the board. Board. Looks like Solos will be able to secure it. Teleport coming in, not getting the knock up onto Nuna. Nuna will manage to jump this way. That is gonna be the place of prison lockdown coming in from the rest. Charm! Three member charm coming in from Ken Frost right there. Double kill for real last three members of UPD the one are down. This is the turnaround that AMA University has been looking for. Off the force to flash away. Only a bot lane of UPD the man is now getting the place of prison lockdown. That's a one man shockwave, but still the damage. Which is just too much for UPD Neman to deal with. Falsada bouncing off the Yotan, getting the kill. That's three members of UPD Neman that are down, capitalizing on the absence of Nona. Triple kill for Falsada. The vengeance is just too real for AMA's top laner. That's going to be the stun lockdown. Nona manages to shove away the members of AMA. They could potentially finish this game, though. That's like that's going to be a plus. Onto Nona, he's dealing, taking so much damage. Five members of AMA in the ace. This could very well be the game. Heavy death timers across the board in what could be a 2 0. Yeah, the comeback is real for AMA. Despite being down for the majority of the game, they managed to show their prowess, get the proper engages, and win the game against Ablation East. Not enough Garena shells to buy the latest League of Legends skin on sale now? Get shells anytime, anywhere with your Globe or Touch mobile number. Go to gamer.com.ph and sign up with your mobile number and enter the verification code you will receive via SMS. Log in and choose the game and pin you want.
checkout to purchase the PIN with your load or through your postpaid account and receive the PIN on your phone instantly. Never miss a sale on your favorite League of Legends skins and champions with Gamer.